Hello, welcome back to your physics teacher. In today's question, we're gonna be solving a real world type of question where there's a braking distance involved. So this means that there's someone just driving casually and then they're gonna take some time to react and then slam on the brake. So we wanna see how to solve these type of questions. And that's gonna be the final questions from sections 1.2 from the Nelson textbook. So let's get started. Question number eight, when a driver is forced to make a panic stop by pressing down on the brake as hard as possible, the car will undergo a large acceleration to stop. So they want you to copy this table into your notebook and calculate the braking distance. Okay, so let's calculate the braking distances. So if we look at this table here, notice that they're giving us three different scenarios. So scenario I, double I, and triple I. In each scenario, they're gonna assume that the acceleration is gonna be the same. And the only thing that's gonna vary is either the reaction time or the speed that the driver is driving with. So the reaction time is how long the person takes before they actually hit on the pedal. So during this reaction time, there's not gonna be a change in velocity. So during this reaction time, that's when the velocity will stay constant. So let's try to make sure we make a note of that. So during this interval, we have constant velocity. And the speed, that's gonna be the speed that it has during this reaction time. And this speed will also be the initial speed that the car is gonna have before it undergoes the acceleration of slowing down. So this is gonna be used twice. So this is the initial speed just before braking. and it will be the speed during the reaction time. So what I want you to do is imagine, so it's driving along, reaction time, and during this reaction time, the speed doesn't change. Once you start to accelerate, the initial speed is the one that you had from before. So that's why I'm saying this speed value is going to be used twice. And the braking distance is what we're trying to find. So that's our question mark. All right, uh, let's put some variables into this. Our acceleration is going to be A, time interval delta T, and let's call this initial speed and braking distance, this would be our delta D, the displacement. And to visualize this even more, let's just quickly draw a picture. So here we have a nice red convertible. And then let's have the reaction time. And we have the braking distance. And the initial speed is going to be the same in these two cases. And our displacement, let's assume it takes place to the right. And assuming that that's your braking distance. So another thing you have to get from the context of the question is, well, if you slam the brake, what's going to happen to your car? It's slowing down. And the purpose is it for it to slow down to come to a complete stop. So this means that the final velocity after this braking distance, hopefully if it, everything is okay and no one gets hurt still, final velocity is zero. And what they gave us is during this final braking distance, 
there's some acceleration and if our velocity is pointing to the right then this means the acceleration has to be pointing to the left that's how you get the slowing down part so they give us three different scenarios but what I'm going to do I'm going to set up the equations nicely for the first scenario and then for scenario two and three we just have to quickly sub in the numbers and then that will make things easier for us so during the first section because it's moving with constant velocity we can use a very simple formula velocity is displacement over time and this displacement let's call it delta d1 or delta dr for reaction displacement delta dr so v initial times delta t so this is the equation to calculate the distance that the car was traveling during the reaction time so we're going to use these formulas and just plug them into the different scenarios to save time so this is the main first formula and what we want to do we want to find the braking distance so we're going to have to use another kinematics formula but the one that we're going to be searching for is one that has velocity final in it velocity initial acceleration and displacement so in case you forgot maybe i'll quickly write the three formulas and then you should be able to identify which one we're going to be using right and because from these three we're looking for formula with displacement so that's the first and the third with acceleration and with the initial speed and the final speed so notice that we didn't use equation one because that one had the time interval so that wasn't good the second equation didn't even have the displacement so we're going to use the third formula from the way i listed them here as the formula to find the braking distance in the second part of this motion. But in the formula, I didn't put the arrowheads, so that's something they should be doing because these are actually vector equations. So we do have to consider directions, which is why drawing the picture it's very helpful so that way we can determine if it's pointing to the left or to the right because if it points to the right we usually take it to be a positive value so let's put in the simplifying this formula here after our breaking distance we hope the final velocity is zero so minus b initial square equals to 2a delta d our acceleration is pointing to the left so that would be negative our displacement is pointing to the right so that would be positive and let's call it delta db for braking so you see why the negatives and positives are important for the direction because here we can cancel them out otherwise you would have gotten an error so try it out for yourself and comment if you made that error so see oh sir that makes sense so v initial square equals to 2a delta db for braking then all we have to do is just isolate for the braking distance so these are the two equations and to find the total braking distance which includes the reaction part and the braking distance while you were pressing down on the pedal all you have to do is just add them up together so let's go up here so delta d total will be delta reaction time plus the one that you're slowing down which we call braking so maybe i shouldn't have called it braking because the way that they worded it here made us a bit confused so the total one 
is the reaction time plus the time that you're pressing down on the accelerator to slow down no on on the brake pedal sorry okay uh, let's put in the formulas so this is how we solve this question now what we need to do is just plug in the values for this big formula for all three cases but before we get too excited, uh, there's actually a trick that they're trying to do to us. Notice that the units are not actually all SI, so not the ones that we work with. So acceleration is in meters per second squared, reaction time is in seconds, but the speed they're giving us in kilometers per hour, so we have to convert to meters per second. So make sure you convert the speed into meters per second before we try to use this formula. All right, so what we're gonna do, uh, let's convert each velocity for each of the cases. So V initial for case I, V initial for case two, and for case three. All right, um, so I just make that part speeding up for you so you have to watch it so carefully. Uh, so here are the three initial velocities that we had to convert from kilometers per hour into meters per second. And then finally, we could plug it in into our big formula to calculate the total braking distance, which considers the reaction time and the braking time. So let's find the total displacement that this took place for each of these cases. Again, if Doing it in one big formula is too complicated for you. Just do it into smaller parts and just make sure you get the same answer, okay? And then you can always just check with mine. Or maybe me trying to do this way, I'm making a mistake so you can correct me in the comments, all right? Okay, I, I got 28 meters and continue doing this for the rest of them. So let's see for double I and triple I. So these are the answers, so let's check quickly. Okay, so uh, here are the answers, make sure you check them. Uh, I'm not gonna do it for the other two, it's just repetitive. Just make sure that you got the same answers as me, okay? And if you didn't, just go over the steps again carefully and find your mistakes.